So I have the honor now to introduce you the next delegate, and that's very easy for me because uh, Felipe and uh, myself, uh, we are inspired by the same source, by Professor Yunus. And uh, Felipe was working in the Grameen Creative Lab for a couple of years in Colombia to fight with me about the human rights in Caldas, in the, in the center of Colombia. When I saw the first time Felipe as a young South American, I saw and remember me like I love the forest and many times I go in the forest. And I go in the forest, sometimes I see a young, strong, beautiful tree. And I imagine this young, beautiful tree will keep on the whole life to cleaning the air, to cleaning the water, to give birds and animals food and a home, to protect other plants around him. And in his seeds, he gives us fruits. And in his seeds, he has all the knowledge to create a new forest. When I saw Felipe Donga, I saw a young, beautiful tree from South America. And my wish comes up. I understood since South America is now 200 years independent. And I hope he is one of this person who navigate South America independent of poverty. Please give a big hand to Felipe. Thank you very much, Hans, for that beautiful introduction. As a child, I traveled around my country and became aware of the significant difference in opportunities between myself and people living in rural areas. By that time, I realized I had to choose. Either I could feel sorry and ashamed for the opportunities I had received, or I could commit and take advantage of them in order to create more opportunities for others. I decided to take the second path. Last year, I had the privilege to be working for Professor Muhammad Yunus, one of my heroes, and with Hans Rights. We were developing social business in Latin America to tackle malnutrition in children. When I first met Professor Yunus, I asked him, what is poverty for you? He then told me a story I will never forget, the story that he told us two days ago. He told me that poor people are like bonsai trees. There's nothing wrong with the seed. The problem is with the plant pot, the plant pot that doesn't allow them to grow, the plant pot that doesn't allow them to reach their full potential. I have decided to dedicate my life to eliminate those plant pots, to eliminate those barriers that make it impossible and difficult for people to reach their potential. This is my passion. So that's why I now work on the Ministry of Development and Social Inclusion of Peru. At 24, I am the youngest member of the Cabinet of Advisors of the Minister. As you can imagine, this is a great responsibility and a great challenge. We focus on the poorest among the poor, with an annual budget of around 1 billion US dollar, supporting more than 3 million people. When fighting poverty, one of the things that worries me the most is chronic malnutrition in children. Even today, one in four children suffer from this. Every year, two million children who are malnourished die. That's one child dead two million times. If there is one thing I could change in the world, it would be to eradicate chronic malnutrition in children. You can imagine how unequal are the opportunities for child who suffer from this. A couple of months ago, I traveled to the jungle to visit a community of indigenous people. They had no water system, no sanitation, and no electricity. Many of their children were malnourished. There is, one young world ambassadors, no single reason why this should continue happening today. Some of you may be thinking, but Felipe, come on, poverty rates are falling, and yes, Poverty rates are falling. However, we need to focus on gaps instead than only on average. Still today, 2012, more than one billion people live under extreme poverty. This means they are surviving with less than $1.25 a day. Nobody has to live in poverty. Everybody should have the basic human right not 
to live in poverty. Everybody, one young world ambassadors, should have enough opportunities to unleash their beautiful potential. This persistent lack of opportunities makes our society unsustainable. And usually, we blame the government for these inequalities. And yes, of course governments are responsible for upholding human rights. That's why I come here to ask you to join the governments of your countries. Let's not just complain from the outside. Let's get inside our governments. It's not easy. And sometimes it's even frustrating. But I can tell you for sure it's worth doing. From inside the government, one, means, one learns the main challenges. One learns to design public policies. And from inside, one gets prepared for taking the right decisions when are needed. Now, I would like you to please stand up. Everybody, please stand up. Stand up and look around the room. Look at the different faces on this room. More than 1,200 delegates from more than 180 countries. 1,200 dreams, 1,200 inspirations. Look around, 1,200 crazy believers that we can change the world. Look around and remember these crazy faces. Remember these faces because this is the people that will help us to create a better world. Please sit down. Together, we will work to create a world free of poverty, a world free of chronic malnutrition in children. This is my personal commitment, but I must say I believe in each and every one of your personal commitments, because I strongly believe that we can only achieve change if we work and commit together. Let's all take today and every day of our lives personal responsibility to tackle poverty, and let's assume this commitment as a community. And when we go to our, back to our countries, let's do something which is very simple, but very powerful. Let's find where are those poverty gaps in our countries. And when we find them, let's visit those communities. Let's learn from them. If it's possible, let's even live with them for a while. And then let's take this knowledge back with us to our countries, to our communities to our social business, our governments, our NGOs, and our companies. Wherever we work, wherever you work, you can do something to create more opportunities for those that most need them. And when we do this, let's not forget that these communities are not passive beneficiaries of our work. They are active partners in their own development. Bob Geldof told us that now it's our time, that now we are the pilots. Let's take the challenge. We take the challenge. We are now the pilots. Let's do it together, and let's do it right. We are a group of individuals that love what we do. The world needs people that love what they do, that go to sleep every Sunday with enthusiasm of waking up on Monday. The world needs people that turn their words into actions every single day. One Young World Ambassadors, Let's work every single day of our lives to create more opportunities for those that most need them. Thank you very much.